Hello folks, this is Ian Steele from the University of Ottawa, Emergency Medicine. Today I'm going to tell you about the Canadian C-spine rule and how to use it on your patients. Canadian C-spine rule was developed through a series of prospective studies including tens of thousands of patients and culminated with a very successful implementation trial of 11,000 patients where we saw significant reduction in imaging without any safety issues. We have subsequently shown the use of these rules by paramedics and by emergency department triage nurses. The rule is intended only for patients who have neck pain after blunt trauma. So if you have alert stable patient who has no neck pain, then you do not need to worry about a C-spine injury uh, and they don't even qualify for this rule. We define alert as GCS 15, stable vital signs, meaning that they're not multiple trauma case. They have to be cooperative and the injury has to have occurred in the last 48 hours. Therefore, we do not use the Canadian C-spine rule for patients without neck pain. Patients under 16, GCS less than 15, major trauma, penetrating trauma, who have a paralysis or no vertebral disease. We know that the uh, rule appears complicated, but actually it's very simple and can be applied in 30 to 60 seconds. We have three questions. One, is there any high risk uh, factor? Two, are there any low risk factors? And three, is the patient able to rotate their neck? So if the patient has any one of the three high risk factors, then imaging is mandated. If they have neck pain and age 65 or more, or have suffered a dangerous mechanism, or have paresthesias in the extremities, then uh, imaging is mandatory. In terms of the low risk criteria, if the patient has no high risk in any single one of these low risk factors, then you can move to question three. So only one of these uh, low risk factors is required, which includes simple rear end motor vehicle collision or that they're sitting when you see them in the department or they report they were ambulatory at any time after the accident or they had onset of neck pain that was delayed and not immediate or if they have absence of midline tenderness. We note that the presence of midline tenderness is nonspecific and is not useful. The third step is, is the patient able to actively rotate their neck and you simply ask them to turn their chin towards their shoulder 45 degrees to the left and to the right. We define a dangerous mechanism as you see on this slide here. These uh, uh, criteria were determined from a careful analysis of some 16,000 patients. And we have defined simple rear end collision as most city rear end accidents involving a stopped car. So we exclude cases where the vehicle is pushed into oncoming traffic or was hit by a bus or a large truck or it results in a rollover or is hit by a very high speed vehicle as might happen on a highway. Okay, now we're going to take the Canadian C-spine rule to the bedside. This is Jennifer. She is 30 and was involved in a simple rear-end motor vehicle collision about two hours ago. She was stopped at a red light and was hit from behind by another car. She is here having been brought by EMS and has some neck pain. So Jennifer, can you tell me where it hurts? It hurts in the back of my neck. Okay, and would you say it's on the side or more in the middle of your neck? In the middle. And did the pain start right at the time of the accident or develop a bit later? Yeah, it started right away. Have you got pain anywhere else? No. All right, and do you have any numbness or tingling in your arms or your legs? No. Okay, I'm going to have a closer look at your neck now. So first let's get rid of this noxious tape. And then I'm going to loosen the collar a little bit, but I'd like you to try not to move, okay? okay. Next, I'm going to uh, check the back of your neck to see if you have any pain or tenderness, okay? So you tell me if, as I go down here in the middle, if I hit anything that hurts. That's a bit sore. Okay. 
Okay, so we've established that Jennifer has none of the three high-risk criteria, but that she has at least one of the low-risk criteria, i.e. that she was involved in a simple rear-end collision. All right, Jennifer, so the next thing uh, we're going to do is have you turn your head to the left and to the right. So to begin with, could you turn your chin towards your left shoulder? Great, now turn it to the right shoulder. Good. And I'm going to ask you to sit up and see how you feel. Okay, and how does that feel? That feels pretty good. Does it hurt anywhere else? Nope. That's great. So at this point, I'm absolutely certain that you don't have anything broken in your neck and that we don't have to keep you around for imaging. That's great. Bye-bye.